Hello everyone. In today's video, we will see how you can do your complete inventory management in Easy Restaurant for you. First of all, you have to go here to Inventory Management. As soon as you click on the inventory, the complete inventory will open. The first option that will appear is Inventory. You have many options inside the inventory. Unit, Supplier, Inventory Items Recipe, Purchase Order, and Purchase Entry. First of all, we will see how we can add items to the inventory. We went here and clicked on Inventory Item Management. Here we clicked on Add New Item. Suppose I want to get a new item called White Paneer. Here I entered White Paneer. Here I have put its description. Only if I have to put any description. If I want to keep a short code, I keep it. If there is a barcode or any finished good like a cold drink or any other good that already has a barcode, then you can scan that barcode and keep it, or you can also enter the number of that barcode here, which will be useful to you later. Then we will put here its approximate purchase price, which probably costs around 200 rupees per kilogram. If you sell it directly, then we will keep its price at 250 rupees. If it has some HSN code, then you can enter it here. If not, then leave it blank. If it is of any brand, then you can keep the brand name. If there is any GST on it, then you can put GST in it. Now here comes what is the unit of this raw material? In which unit do you buy it generally? So you buy it in kilograms. If you buy it in multiple units, then you can enter it here. Now after this comes base unit. Base unit means in which unit you want to see its inventory, in kilograms or grams, whichever you want to see it. Now when we make a recipe, so if we use this particular white paneer as a finished item, then how do we want to consume it? Obviously, we will consume it in grams only. Suppose you are consuming 100 grams of paneer and making one paneer tikka. Then we will enter it in grams. Hence here we have kept the consumption unit in grams. So we saw three things here. Raw material unit, base unit, and consumption unit. After this, we save it. Our data has been saved and we have this white paneer here. After this, we go back to the inventory. After this, we will see how its recipe is made from here. If we have to make a recipe, we have to click on the Add Recipe button. We have to select the item from here. I take any item of paneer from here. It is visible here. Cheese paneer, tukda mysore, palak paneer. We take palak paneer. We will need white paneer and palak paneer. And here we need 100 grams of paneer, so I make the quantity 100 here. After that, it is possible that I may need 50 grams of milk to make palak paneer. From here we can select the units. Suppose we need milk in 50 milliliters, so I selected the unit of milliliters from here. So from here I saved it, and this recipe of mine has been successfully created. Suppose you want to see that I had to add a supplier, then from here, you can see that the supplier is already added. If you click on Add a Supplier, then you will get all these details to fill in here. If you fill them in and save, then a new supplier will also be added to you. Now we will go to Purchase Entry. Now I have to make a new purchase, meaning the stock that has come to me. According to the purchase bill, I have to enter it. So I will go to Add Purchase Entry here. If I had given them a PO, then that PO number appears here. I have another option to create a PO as well, so let's see that. Suppose we see that today on 5th June I am buying something from ABC Food. I have received an invoice number from them, and that is 5655. I had not entered any GST number for ABC Food, hence it is not coming here. And this is my unpaid invoice. Unpaid means I have not yet paid. I have taken it on credit. Now I am buying white paneer from them and I am buying 10 kilograms of white paneer, and here I have kept its MRP and sale price. If I sell it directly, then only it will be of use, and if I do not sell it directly and only consume it through some of my recipes, then there will be no need for this MRP and sale price. I can add more than one item. Suppose I have to add one more item, and I'm buying milk. If it is milk, then definitely the milk will have some expiry date or batch number. I have already selected item-wise which items it will ask for expiry date and batch number and on which items it will not ask. So both these things can be managed. 
Suppose I enter the expiry date here and the batch number here. Then I can save both things from here. Suppose I do not want to buy this milk item. Now then I will leave it. That is fine for now because I have not even checked the batch number and expiry. So I will check it first and then update it there. Now, as I am purchasing floor, you know floor is also a perishable product. So paneer is just like it in the same manner. Just for a demo, I am telling you that you can do all these things. So let's take an example. I am saving only one item, which is white paneer. After saving, you can see that white paneer has arrived in this invoice number. Now, if we look at its stock report, we will see that I have bought 10 kilograms of white paneer. It means I have 10 kilograms of white paneer available here. Now, as I go through this white paneer recipe that I had made, this is my recipe. Here, I had made palak paneer. Now, as soon as I sell the palak paneer, the 100 gram palak paneer that I had will get deducted when one palak paneer mysore is sold and my stock report will get updated automatically. So you saw how easy it was to use all these options. You can create suppliers, you can create items of inventory, create recipes, and make purchase entries. Now I have another option of purchase order. What happens in a purchase order if I need to raise a purchase order to my supplier in advance? I have entered the purchase order number here. And here I have to raise the order so I am selecting ABC Foods from here. And I have to place this order on today's date so I selected the date. I put the terms of payments on credit and also put the terms of delivery in advance. Now if I want to order, I select white paneer from here and I want to order it in quantity of 20 kilograms. Here I write in the description that it should be fresh. This is the one item I want to order from them. I saved this. This is my purchase order and it has been saved. Here it will not show in the stock report. This white paneer is still 10 kilograms in the stock report because I have just created a purchase order and not purchased it. This item will be added to my stock after placing the purchase order. After that, we will see the unit. Look at the unit here. We have already made so many units here by default. If you want to make any new unit, then you simply have to click on Add Unit. And here you have to enter the name of the unit and the description of the unit. Whatever your unit, generally, we have already created it here as many units have come into the market available here. Like there are many things in ML. Many things come in grams, kilograms, milligrams. It comes in liters, and after that, it comes in cans. It comes in bags, and if it comes in a 25 kilogram bag, then you can keep it in a separate unit. If there are bottles, then they come in BTLS. Things come in boxes and packets also. So from here, you can create all the units you have. And while making further items or while adding inventory, you can add those units while purchasing. You can do this so that your stock will be managed in particular units and your recipes will also be managed in all those particular units. Thank you for watching this video.